You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Is it better to be a wooden boy or a real Jack? <coughs> well, guys, uh, this is Walt Disney's second film we're talking about today, Pinocchio. And it is the last of what we're going to be discussing concerning Disney's golden era of film. Uh, if you want to know more about the eras, go back. There's an episode called uh, What Has Disney Been Preaching or something like that. Picture of a bunch of Disney characters in the castle on there. Check that out for reference. This is Systematic Geekology. We are the Priest of the Geeks. I am one of your co-hosts today, Joshua Knoll, here with the other co-host of this episode, uh, TJ Tiberius on Blackwell. Hey, hey, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and both of us are also part of the Whole Church Podcast, if you want to hear more from us there. And um, I don't know, TJ, recently I've been geeking out on, uh, there's this holiday called Thanksgiving. Mm. Yeah. Explain it to me. I, uh... (laughs) Well, part of how I've been geeking out on it is uh, just cooking a a lot of meat. A lot of turkey, a lot of potatoes, mac and cheese, preparing for Friendsgiving and Thanksgiving. TJ is actually going to come visit us for Friendsgiving coming up soon. I, for the first time ever, did, uh, well, you, you can correct me if I'm saying that wrong. For the first time ever, I uh, cock splotched my turkey. Did I say that wrong? Splatched. Splatched? Okay. I just call it splatched. He's just splatched it. Okay. But I, I think it's, it is cock splatching. I, um, yeah, I've never done it before. I, I typically, I, I have stuff that I'm cooking the turkey with that will keep it moist anyway, so I don't really need to do it, but I wanted to try a different dry rub and different stuff, and this was just, uh, felt like it would work better. It worked pretty good. Uh, my first turkey of the year was fantastic, uh, partially because of that and partially because I, uh, cut fresh herbs instead of just using the, the stuff in the little packets. Spatchcock. Spatchcock ah. is the, yeah. Gotcha. Well, DJ, uh, what you been geeking out on lately? Yeah, geeking out. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if it's fair to say geeking out. It doesn't really seem like a geeky activity anymore. But uh, the Modern Warfare Two remaster just came out. Or oh, that counts. reboot. Man, I have been. It's actually on right now. It is. It is behind <laughs> the screen as we're recording. I was. I was working on my custom classes a little bit. Are you going to bring that for Friendsgiving? I can. I think you should. I want to play. play. It's it's yeah. still split screen, so nice. Yeah, nice. I can. Cool. Well, with that, uh, with that plans that we just <laughs> we just made on air, yeah. guys. Uh, today we're discussing Walt Disney's animated feature film Pinocchio, uh, 1940 when this one was made. Still in that golden era of Disney films. I- I'm excited to talk about this one. It's not necessarily one of my favorite Disney films, but it is good. TJ, what what do you remember of the Pinocchio story? Like how it goes. So I just real quick, I do want to say um, uh, the game has been out for 12 days, 11 days. I have 35 hours in it so far, <laughs> which is actually not that much compared to a lot of people. But yeah, I don't think it's as much as you did when uh, Elden Ring came out. No, it, it's way less. Yeah, but that's different. Uh, yeah. So basically what I remember about Pinocchio because I, I have a strict no research clause for most episodes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Best a way to do it. Puppet master, puppet maker named Giacomo? Giappetto. 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 I know a guy in real life named Giacomo. Uh, <laughs> that really threw me off. Puppet comes to life. He wants to be a real boy. He runs away to try and find out how. And it doesn't go so well for him. He gets swallowed by a whale. And Jiminy Cricket's there. <laughs> Is the whale thing there? Is that still? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. I, uh, I have some something fascinating to tell you about that later on in the episode. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. So basically exactly what TJ said and just kind of, it's very episodic and, you know, Pinocchio did this, then Pinocchio did that, then Pinocchio did this, but there seems to be a lot of, um, threads pulling it all together. It does still feel like a continuous story, but it is episodic, if that makes sense. Um, what made this film great? TJ, why is this a good movie? I think Pinocchio is a, a very relatable character for a lot of people. That's pretty true. They, they want to be something they aren't. Despite yeah, and, that might mean. Yeah. And and as we would say today, it's like he, he faces a lot of like adulting problems where like he's just doing stuff and he's like, man, man, what do you mean? I don't know how to do this. No one ever told me how to do this. 
Yeah. Because, you know, he was just born. What's hilarious is that as soon as he's like comes to life, Geppetto's like, man, you need to go to bed. You got to go to school tomorrow. He's like, what's yeah. bed? What's school? <laughs> Where am I? I'm like, Geppetto's just serious about this. Well, dang, you're alive. Go to sleep. <laughs> First thing in the morning, you're going to school. Oh, I just thought that was funny. Um, yeah, so there were a lot, like, technically, there's a lot of stuff about this film that's really cool. Um, even at the time it was made, up until today, most critics will claim that this is the perfect animated film. This is it. There is no flaws. I don't agree. But Disney initially lost money on the film, despite it having such good reviews and stuff. Largely, that had to do with the fact that a lot of countries just simply couldn't play movies in 1940 because of what was happening in the world in 1940. Think about that for a minute. There is a world war. Yeah. I don't need to say anything else other than that. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah. Um, if you have studied film in college or plan to, they will most likely make you watch Pinocchio. Most curriculum include this movie. Um, this is the first character in Disney that actually has a character arc. If you remember Snow White and Seven Dwarves we talked about last time, literally none of them have an arc. Snow White is the same person from the beginning to the end. Stuff happens to her. She remains the same person. They all do. Well, I mean, grumpy still queen, grumpy. The queen kind of has a character arc. Uh, she's alive when the story starts, and she's not when it ends. <laughs> that's that's, that's true. <laughs> I guess. Um, also, what makes this a great movie is that it might be a Thanksgiving movie, technically. Maybe. Hear me out, TJ. They have a big turkey dinner at one point. I'm convinced that must be a Thanksgiving meal. And the whole moral of the story is just kind of like, you know, being thankful for what you have, not wishing for more. Because, you know, he just constantly wants to be a real boy. Perhaps. Can I can I count it? Can I count this as a Thanksgiving film? No. I'm going to do it. I'm going to count it anyway. <laughs> although I'm not going to want to watch it on Thanksgiving. So I don't know why I want to count it. <laughs> well, I mean, although I will watch Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving film. That was this good. And Garfield honestly had a pretty decent one, too. Mostly TV specials are where Thanksgiving thrives. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so what the animation, uh, what do you remember about how this film looked? Uh, most of what I remember is there's kind of a, a dark tone to yeah, most of the movie. That's true. And it's it looks very good. It looks really good. There's a lot of stuff where I, I, I had a I watched it again recently and I'm thinking about I'm actually thinking about when it was made and everything. And there's a lot of stuff that you take for granted now and you have to realize, oh, wait a minute, this was hand drawn. Today, they can make an animation. All right, they're in the water. Add in the water effect. Nope. They had to redraw everything and make each individual frame look like he was inside a fishbowl for that scene. That's actually pretty wild. Uh, it's yeah. So you got to remember this whole thing is hand drawn, which is crazy. Walt tried to make Walt Disney when he went through, he wanted this film to look like a camera was actually on set following the characters. He didn't want it to look like a real film, but he wanted the movement of the scenes to look like that. And I think they did a really good job with that. Um, a lot of the stuff they animated for this, they literally built. Geppetto was a clockmaker. They built a bunch of clocks, brought it in, had it in set, and they modeled it after actual clocks that they built specifically for the movie. A lot went into the animation of this. One of the things I think is coolest, uh, I, I really like how the little village that Geppetto lives in looks like, I think just how it looks aesthetically is really cool. It's an Italian village with German with Germanic influence, and it was designed by someone from Sweden. And all three of those cultures are very clearly seen in some of the, just like what the buildings look like. And it's wild. It just looks cool. I like it. Also, yeah. we mentioned last time, ro Rotoscope. One of the earliest time it was used in films was for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. They use it again for this. And that's just, you know, they take someone's actual movements and then they just trace over it scene by scene. And that's why, if you notice, the Blue Fairy moves so much differently than all the other characters and just looks different. And it's because they wanted the fairy to feel different. And I think, I think they did a good job with that. It was a really cool effect. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add about the animation of this? Uh, I think if you just aren't familiar with the way animation used to work, just look up cell shading and yeah. see why things look so different now. Yeah. And look just like scene by scene, or at least a couple scenes, just pick a random scene out of each. Compare 1937 Snow White in this film. It just it looks like so much more than three years of progress. And Snow White looked good, but this looks so much better. And it's kind of weird that it's only been three years. Yeah. But yeah, just weird. Um, so on to the story aspect, the stuff that I think people are a little bit more interested in. How much do you know of the original Pinocchio story? I think I might actually know nothing about the original Pokemon. 
Pinocchio story. Yeah. Well, this one wasn't a Grimm Brothers story. I didn't realize that. I forget who wrote the story. We can look it up if you guys want. I wrote it. It was me. All those years ago. Yeah. Um, but whenever the some of the main differences are, are pretty telling. Carlo Collodi. One more time. Carlo Collodi. Nice. Yeah. It's actually a really good story. The original, I, I think, I, I'll say this a lot. I, I like the original story better than Disney's story, but I don't think it would have made a good kids film at all. And we'll get to why. When Walt first watched this film, and they originally did Pinocchio as the same character as the Pinocchio in the book, and kind of the same personality and everything, Walt watched the film and went, yeah, Pinocchio is not likable. We need to make him likable. Because, <laughs> like, in the original story, Pinocchio wasn't naive and accidentally doing bad things and being tricked and, you know, whatever that easily. No, Pinocchio was actually a bad kid. <laughs> he was just bad. And he, he, even when he's in... Tr- Pleasure Island in the sto- in the books, he's like, I like being bad. <laughs> he smiles about it. He's like, this is great. Being bad is fun. <laughs> and uh, that's just who Pinocchio was. And here, Disney was like, I think he'd be a lot more likable if he was just naive and just fell for stuff really easily instead of just being a bad person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still a little selfish. There still was a story arc, but we're not going to make him just a bad kid. Right. Um, to, to highlight how bad Pinocchio was, and this is the largest difference of the film in the original story. Jiminy was not a huge, Jiminy Cricket was not a huge part of the original story. He showed up for a minute, got murdered, came back a couple other times as a ghost to be like, hey, don't you wish you would have been better, Pinocchio? Yeah, uh, he first showed up. It was telling Pinocchio how to live, and Pinocchio didn't really like his voice that much, so he threw a hatchet at him and murdered him. That's the story <laughs> oh, I think I should have left that in. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been great. And, you know, a couple of the times his ghost shows up. He's like, Pinocchio, you need to return home. <laughs> But it's the ghost of Jiminy Cricket. And Disney was like, yeah, we're not doing that. We're going to have uh, Jiminy Cricket be really likable, stick around the whole time and kind of narrate the film, make a few perverted jokes. Also, watch this as an adult. Jiminy Cricket's jokes are just bad. Also, he really seems to have a thing for girl puppets. Make of that what you will. Proximity breeds fondness, you know? I, yeah, Sure. What I think the one of the wildest differences, I told you I'd mentioned this. Monstro is not a whale in the original story. So what happens? Pinocchio is on Pleasure Island doing his thing. Uh, Geppetto goes out looking for him, which I think is what happens in the movie, but they don't state why Geppetto was on the water in the movie. But I think that's what's happening. And, you know, in the movie, he gets swallowed by a big whale. In this, uh, Pinocchio gets told that his dad was looking for him and got murdered by a shark. Hmm. And, you know, long story short, He's on the water later on in the story trying to make it home because he feels so bad about killing Geppetto that he's like, I got to be a good person now. Uh, And while he's on the water, the shark comes and swallows him and he finds Geppetto inside of a shark. Monstro is supposed to be a giant shark. And uh, I understand why Disney didn't do that because I kind of feel like Jaws for Children sounds bad. (laughs) Yeah, it is a lot scarier. Like It's really the exact same thing. But without sharp teeth. (laughs) But without, but Monstro does have sharp teeth. That's true. I think Doesn't whale he? just sounds less scary. I don't think Whales so. are just less scary. Whales are less scary. Because like sharks <laughs> aren't big enough to eat a person like that. Some whales are. Yeah, But they absolutely could make giant shark, even an animated style. They could make that really creepy. Like they have yeah. it. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the guy who's making the one for Netflix coming up? Guillermo del Toro. I really hope he makes it the giant shark. <laughs> I Guillermo del Toro can do nothing wrong. Everything he does is perfect. Mm-hmm. I love Guillermo del Toro. And uh, do you think he'll make a giant creepy shark swallow? <laughs> well, are, are you familiar with the rest of his work? I know the name and I looked it up last time you and Will were talking about him and I, I recognize some films, but I don't remember what those were. Well, yes, I absolutely think he will do the giant shark. God, praise God. Yeah. Do you think he, he'll he did make the first two Hellboy movies? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Pan's I love Labyrinth. Those. Even though yeah. they're not really much like the comic, but I still love them. Um, I do you think he'll make Pinocchio a bad a bad kid? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I wonder how much he's going to pull from the Disney movie and how much he's just going to pull from the original book and say, forget the Disney movie. Yeah, I have no idea. I can't wait to find out. Yeah, I really hope there's a giant creepy shark. Also, uh, and- uh, check out ca- uh, C- Cabinet of Curiosities on Netflix by Guillermo del Toro. It's good. Hmm. All right. Good little yeah, horror uh, miniseries. Also, you guys can look forward to uh, TJ and Will are going to review uh, his version of Pinocchio when it comes out in December. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Which, by the way, if you were unfamiliar, there are three reboots of Pinocchio currently in the works from different people. 
Is that including the Disney one that just came out, the live action yeah. one? Yeah, 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 it is. So what are the other two? Uh, one is Guillermo del Toro's, and one is some other company that is terrible, horrible adaptation. Yeah, well, it's much like uh, they recently did that, uh, the Winnie the Pooh, was it Blood and Honey or whatever it was, like a horror version of Winnie the Pooh. Some of these uh, stories that Disney made are reaching their patent limit, basically. So now anybody can do something with these characters, and uh, some of it's not great. Yeah, the copyright law is uh, set to 100 years. Yeah, so unless and, you uh, renew the copyright, once it's done, you get to keep going. Someone else can do whatever they want. That's why the Lord of the Rings show happened. Which was phenomenal, but... I know that's debatable, but I just got to say, I think it's phenomenal. I enjoy it. Anyway, yeah, so this story, it's one of the few where the story itself is actually just trying to tell moral stories. And I think the movie does a good job of also kind of reiterating some of that. I mean, you look at Pleasure Island and it's the story of how hedonism, how just living for pleasure comes with a price. Also, didn't know if you knew this. Really funny. Disney Plus, if you try to watch Pinocchio, starts with a warning for kids about smoking. (laughs) Because, you know. In the original film, it goes to Pleasure Island. He starts smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they do it in the movie. In the book, Pinocchio becomes a donkey after Pleasure Island. And yeah, basically sure gets, becomes you somebody. So, yeah, I know he gets ears and a tail, but I don't know if he fully becomes a donkey or not. But, sure. yeah, it, there, there's just this question of how important is it to you to be real? Is it so important that you'd be okay becoming a jackass, as they call it in the movie? Or would you rather be a wooden boy? You know, it does a lot of what are the penalties? What happens if you just live for pleasure, if you just live for yourself? The movie hints at it. The book straight up tells us Geppetto gets killed looking for Pinocchio because Pinocchio decided that his own pleasure and what he wanted was more important than anybody else. Turns out Geppetto wasn't actually killed, but he thought he was. Got eaten by a shark. So hard that to would get kill you in real life, life, for the yeah. record. <laughs> for the record. For most people. It wouldn't, I would be, I'd be okay. Yeah. Most people would die from that. True, true. Also, just as a series of stories, you see where, and I think this is part of why he's a puppet, right? You see where some of the stuff, he makes bad choices and bad things happen to him. But then also, you see where he tries to go back home and he tries to start doing things right. And people are pulling his strings, right? People are manipulating him or doing different things around him and causing bad things to happen to him. And a lot of the story is, hey, sometimes life just sucks. Sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, TJ, should we end there? Does life just suck? Yes. <laughs> all right, guys, life sucks. Uh, remember that we're all sad about it. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, yeah, I. it's it's interesting that they are that they do bring that out here. And, of course, the movie still has a happy ending. I think the book also has the same happy ending. You know, he becomes a real boy in the end once he accepts his life and is thankful for what he has. Yay, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Go eat a turkey. But I, I do think the movie teaches one of my favorite lessons because uh, you cannot control the things that happen to you. You can't control other people's actions, but you can control your own reactions. Hmm. Hmm. How do you see that in the movie? Uh, when Pinocchio stops fighting these things and becomes thankful for what he has. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, is there is there a part of like our general society where this seems to be a major problem? Uh, yes, most of it. Yeah. Yeah, I get uh, that. As, as in our country, as an American side, we've become very selfish, I feel like. That's true. We've become a very hedonistic country, I feel like. I, the amount of times people are like, well, I have to do what makes me happy and, you know, live for myself. And I'm like, that's not, no, you don't. <laughs> you actually don't have to do that. Yeah. It's just it's actually a bad to thing to do. Yeah. Um, and I, uh. I don't, we're not I, saying you shouldn't take time to work on yourself. You should yeah. yeah, care for yourself, but you should not be living for yourself. There are more important things to live for. Yeah. God, if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, I still think love is a more important thing to live for than yourself. I think generally you'll find yourself happier. Yeah. Uh, also, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio reboot. I think yeah. that's going to be pretty good. So yeah. I'll live for that. Yeah. The ending also, of One Piece. Yeah. Live for thankfulness. I, I honestly, I've genuinely found that the more thankful I am, the more I express my gratitude towards others, the better people are are just in general or maybe just around me because they realize that I actually value them, you know? And I think just taking the time to be thankful for what you have and to let people know that they mean something to you, that you don't want them to get swallowed by a giant whale shark, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, TJ, it's really important to me that you don't get swallowed by a giant whale shark, you know, something like that. Sure. Just let people know. And typically when they know that you, that you appreciate them, 
people tend to appreciate you back and it just makes life better. Yep. Yeah. I also life easier. What you said made me think of like, because you were talking about how you don't have to react. And that just makes me think of all of social media and how often as even our political leaders in America, which is just weird. Often someone says something and everyone feels like, well, now I need to say what I think about that. I need to put my thoughts out there and they have to respond like worse than the original person was and just kind of keeps getting worse and worse back and forth. And I'm like, I what I'll, I'll even put out there because I follow a lot of like Christian theologians and stuff. The amount of times people argue like that about different theology points on Twitter to me is embarrassing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I would just be embarrassed to be caught in any Twitter argument. <laughs> yeah. Like his opinion does not matter to me. You just don't need to react. If someone's opinion or someone's way that they articulate a thought made you rethink things, question them, talk to them about it, but you don't need to react angrily because they said something that you don't agree. Like, shut up and let them say what they want to say, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as a great man once said, uh, say what you need to say, say what you need to say. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what, one last question before we wrap this up. Where, what other places do you see these characters, the songs, anything like that, that to you, were the coolest places you've seen them outside of the movie? I, I can know. go first if it helps. I, f I feel like it, it is still fairly common to see somebody just pretend they have a really long nose <laughs> in reference yeah. to Pinocchio. Like, hey, they're lying. Or like someone pantomiming, like their nose growing. Or like <laughs> someone's yeah, it's, it's in a lot of cartoons, too, like that mm -hmm. aren't related to Disney at all. <laughs> What's funny is that was a total of one scene in the Pinocchio movie that that happens. Yeah. It's not even a major part of the movie. <laughs> Yeah, I always thought that was funny. I'm like, yeah, but that just stuck with us all somehow. I think my favorite one, I don't even, I don't even know what series it's from, but a snowman has the power <laughs> of, you know, lying in his carrot nose growing and he just lies <laughs> and cuts some off and eats it. God, that's funny. In the book, I don't know what happened in the movie. In the book, whenever his nose grew too big, <laughs> the fairy was just like, you don't need to lie. And then just summon some woodpeckers to <laughs> peck his nose back down to normal size. Oh, that was hilarious. I hope they do that in the Netflix one, too. That would be funny. For me, two of my favorites. Well, I'll just give three of my favorites. I loved in um, Avengers Age of Ultron when Ultron was did the I have no strings on me line. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Because if you recall in the Pinocchio movie, he sings that song while someone's pulling strings on him. So it's really ironic, and it's ironic that Ultron did that when it's like, uh, literally, Tony Stark just programmed you, dude. Yep. Um, the song at Magic Kingdom, whenever you're in front of the castle, they or in the castle, they always have the music from When You Wish Upon a Star, which just kind of became the entire theme song for Disney somehow. That is true. I forgot that was from Pinocchio. Yeah. God. And it's such a good song. Like, it, it deserves it. It was It won an award, which is hilarious. Could you imagine... Frozen winning an award for Frozen song, but then no one went out to watch Frozen. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're not going to the theater, but man, that was a good song, guys. <laughs> it's funny. That's how I. Um, that's how I did. Uh, gosh, I did do that to Frozen too for a little while before somebody fro forced fun. me to watch it. Frozen two had a great song, a song that was way better than the movie. I don't think that when you wish upon a star song was better than the movie Pinocchio, but no. man, that song is pretty good. <laughs> and the original with Jiminy Cricket singing it even better. No version since has topped that. And of course, I have to mention, Pinocchio is in Kingdom Hearts. And one of my favorite things ever in the original Kingdom Hearts game, because I've played it a lot. I beat that, year, that game almost every year of my life since it's come out, which has been a very long time, like 20 years or something. If you, Whenever you're leaving the Aladdin level, you can either choose to go to Under the Sea or Nightmare Before Christmas. And randomly, Monstro appears between one of those worlds and you don't know which one until it happens once. <laughs> so you just think you're going to a world and then giant whale comes into space and just swallows you. And now you just have to do that level first. And it's so yeah. funny. Uh, it's just great. Every time I'm like, man, especially the second time I beat Kingdom Hearts when I was like, I don't want to do Monstro yet. I'll go to the other side. <laughs> the monster was there. And I was like, oh, well, that's just uh, OK. That's how this works. <laughs> it's good times. Yeah. So, uh. That being said, uh, did you have anything else that you're like, man, I'm really glad this came out of Pinocchio or that Pinocchio allowed this to happen? Yeah, I'm I'm really glad that Pinocchio exists so I can get Guillermo del Toro's version of Pinocchio. I'm not kidding. Everything he does. <laughs> fantastic to me. That's fair. That's fair. I got to say, 
I'm glad that Disney changed Jiminy Cricket. The character Jiminy Cricket is just one of my favorite Disney characters, even though Pinocchio is not one of my favorite Disney movies. I don't think it's perfect. My only problem with Pinocchio, same problem I have with uh, C.S. Lewis's Narnia, there's too many random things crammed into this film. Like, there's random stuff from German culture, random stuff from this culture. Some animals are pomorphosized, some are not anamorphosized. Some are just, just, it's just so random. Anthropomorphized. Thank you. I just, uh, and, and I don't mind random stuff. It's just when you can't have coherency like that, it takes me out of the story just a little bit. And honestly, that's just such a minor flaw that it's like almost perfect. Oh no, almost perfect. It's still, it's still a fantastic film. On face value, it's better than most Disney films. Enjoyment wise, I just enjoy a lot of Disney films better, even though I think it might technically be a better movie. That's valid. That's valid. Yeah. Oh, where, where, where does this rank for you as far as Disney movies go? Is this one of your favorites? or? It's not. It's not one of my favorites. Um, it's, ju- it's just definitely not one of my least favorites. Yeah, it's good. Like really It's not movie. something that I plan on revisiting uh, unless somebody says, hey, let's watch Pinocchio. Then I, I wouldn't have anything against it. Unless I think you should watch it as an adult at some point. I think most people should. There's a lot of jokes you wouldn't get as a kid. I don't know, man. I was a pretty snappy kid. That's fair. That's fair. All right, guys. Well, with that being said, I I recommend if you haven't seen it in a while, I do recommend you watch Pinocchio as an adult. It's worth it. Uh, Keep in mind, all this was hand drawn and just be amazed at the animation. Enjoy the adult humor that snuck in and just have a good time with it. And that being said, it's time to wrap this one up. TJ, what non Pinocchio movie? (laughs) It doesn't have to be a movie. What non-Pinocchio thing would you recommend for people today? Guillermo del Toro, Pan's <laughs> Labyrinth. All right. Fair enough. Great movie. Great movie. Man, I am. Um, oh, I finally started watching Disenchanted. The Netflix. Watch more than the first couple episodes. That's my recommendation. Because oh, I yeah. watched the first couple and it just didn't really pull me in. And now that I've seen like a good chunk of it, I'm like, oh, no, man, this is this is pretty killer. Oh, yeah, it is good. Yeah. It's got I, slow, haven't, I haven't slow seen build. the newest season. I haven't but. yet. I'm about to. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, with that being said, maybe we'll do an episode on that one day. If you want us to, go to systematicgeekology.org. There's like a little contact the tab or something. Hit that. Put in there. Hey, I think you guys should do an episode about Dis- Disenchanted. TJ and I will do it. Uh, you can also go to the host tab. Me and TJ's names are on there. You can see all the episodes that we've done before. Just let us know what you've been geeking out on, what you think we should be geeking out on. And of course, do us the favor of remembering the most important thing that I can think to tell you. And that is that we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.